how is everybody doing? I hope everyone is well and healthy. First and foremost, I want to credit the paper, The Balance, and their writer, Amadeo, for the accumulation of information which I'm going to disperse on this video today. The title of the video and topic is called The Trump's Tax Plan. Let's get into it. POTUS, which stands for the President of the United States, Trump's Tax Plan. The official name is Tax Cuts and Job Act. Sounds very simple. Sounds like something President Trump would come up with himself. Very to the point, very basic, not complicated. So whether or not you find that to be a good thing, it's up to you. Um, but the touching points, the touching points are number one, who gets a cut? The main complaints and worries. Number two, which areas of taxation will be affected? Number three, Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, uninsured tax. Number four, single individuals that make 200000 to 500000 and married individuals that file jointly that make 400000 to $600,000. Number five, how long does it last? Number six, what can we do to alter it? Number seven, how can we benefit from it? The two ways. Let's get into it. Okay. Who gets a cut? The truth is everyone is getting a cut. Now, whether or not you like that cut is a different story. Uh, this is a cut all the way across. Um, I will be showing you guys a chart about this. Everyone will be getting a cut. Now, there are complaints regarding this. Um, some are saying this does not help the uh, smaller guys, the poorer guys. Um, it actually helps everyone to a very unique degree, I would say. Um, and it can also harm everyone depending on where you fall because there are ripples to everything that you do. Um, there will be give and takes and we're just going to be here to make sure that we are part of the taking and less of the giving. Okay. So um, everyone will be getting a cut all the way across. Now, some of the complaints we have to be careful with because while the worries and the complaints have been legit, have been something to speculate upon, to analyze deeper and, and also require deeper scrutiny, there are politics involved. And when there's politics involved, we understand there are, there is BS involved. And by BS, I mean baloney sandwich, bad science. So some of the worries are inflation. This could cause rapid inflation in the economy. It could also increase the U.S. debt uh, drastically. Now, those are very substantial uh, claims. Um, if with proper research, you can see where it's coming from. It's not something that that we should take lightly our our deficit is high it does affect everyone both domestic and global the u.s is a major uh, global economic market so if you're going to do anything that shakes the u.s economy it can very well shake global economy starting with the eu and major trading partners almost immediately now some complaints are some people are saying in the same breath that the cuts that people are getting for some of the people who make very little money the poverty line or lower are very uh, insignificant they're saying they're getting below one percent now while that may be true um you know it is still a tax cut how much of a relief it will be probably not much um but these are also the same people we have to keep in mind that are saying that this tax cut is bad for the for the deficit so i doubt they really want to raise the the amount of deduction cut in tax deduction that these people will be receiving because that would create an even bigger problem in regards to the deficit as we we're just talking about earlier so let's just move on we're looking at number two the taxations affected will be the corporate tax which most of you guys do not deal with since you don't have corporations uh, the individual tax, which is down by 37%. I'll show you the chart to see um, where a lot of us were in the tax bracket and where we fall in this year. Uh, income tax, of course, standard deduction tax, which is 
a flat rate tax uh, usually will um, affect you if you're married or single since this is a red pill channel most people here probably are not married and um, also personal exemptions what you can exempt from and what you cannot so we're going to get into that into more details let's keep moving this one is a bit controversial with most people it's the affordable care act the obamacare that's number three I'm going to focus on uninsured tax because that's the area that's really being affected here. Uh, the two acts, the Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare, the Tax Cut and Job Act, the Trump tax plan, they collide here because one will be overriding the other. Um, the Trump tax plan will be getting rid of the taxation that is paid for those that are uninsured when filing uh that was imposed by the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, to break it down and simplify it, basically, when you, if you don't have insurance, when you go to file your taxes, they ask you, were you insured by a, by a company, a health insurance company, during the last year, the year that you're filing for? If you were not, then they would charge you an amount and make you pay that out of your tax uh, refunds. So, in my opinion, I never supported that part of the Obamacare so for all the fans of Obama, this is not a knock on Obama. It's not a knock on the Democrat Party. It's just a particular thing that I just never agreed with. Um, in my opinion, if someone cannot pay for tax uh, for for insurance, they should not be taxed or fined because they couldn't afford it. Because even the Affordable Care Act is not affordable to certain people. That's one. Two, some people are into holistic medicine. They do not believe in modern medicine or Western medicine. That is their choice to not participate. So if, you know, if they don't want to, they should not be forced to purchase insurance. I think if anything, this actually benefited the insurance companies by giving them, uh, a 100% chance of getting clients or, 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 or customers, however you want to label it, because everyone would have to be insured if they want to avoid the taxation at the end of the year or the beginning of the new year. I never agree with that. Also, very rich people on the other end who can afford their medical and health care without insurance that prefer to not deal with the where you know the areas where insurance actually lacks those people have their own choices and if they wish not to participate they also have their choices i'm a big believer in giving people their choices so i never agreed that they would be taxed or should be taxed so uh removing that i won't miss it i don't know what you guys think you can drop your knowledge say what you want uh we all have different opinions that's fine and uh let's move on now in your tax bracket in number four uh, this area, most people do not fall in. Uh, those are people who are probably like high end lawyers, doctors, uh, high end uh, business owners. But most people do not fall in this category. So I'm going to talk about it briefly because it seems to be the only category, not uh, not the only, but in the higher end of those who make more money that is not very well uh, accommodated for in this tax cut uh this tax cut phenomenon that's taking place so for those of you who are single making two hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars a year which is more pretty much not you know many many of us um if you used to pay around 33 percent to 35 percent in 2017 um you know they're deducting about uh 35 percent in 2018 so if you were at 33 this sucks for you if you're at 34 this you know sucks for you if you at 35 it kind of stays the same which i'm not sure why you did it that way but as i did further further research um i'm no expert but as i did further research i found out the r there's also an area that's kind of tricky. They're adjusting the amount of money you made. So don't let that fool you. They may still be getting a, a big cut or a decent cut or at least a cut period, right? Because, um, for example, I'm finding out that the 200,000 have been changed in certain areas. So let's say 270,000, the numbers have been adjusted. So even though they might be, let's say, taking more from them in a way, um, they, these people are also receiving, um, you know, they're also giving them a chance to make more money and not fall in this bracket anymore. So, um, 
that's something to look at and keep in mind. If you're married, that would be 400,000 to 600,000. That's also something to keep in mind. And also this bracket would, would really involve a lot of small business owners who are doing very well. They have not cracked the million dollar mark but they're still making very good money. Those small business owners are also eligible or eligible for, um, there are special deduction for those who are business owners. So, um, they, you know, they also, if you're in that category, making that kind of money, which is a lot of people, uh, when it comes to that bracket, um, your standings one could change because of, um, in a second to last, for those of you looking at the chart, it's second to last, the same bracket I was talking about earlier. Um, first of all, they, they may adjust where you fall in that bracket. So you could be making 270 now. So that 2%, 1% won't really bother you as much because it won't, it probably won't stay at the 200,000 as we see it. And they might have passed that law when it was pretty much at 190,000. So now we're talking about 200,000. There's an adjustment, you know, um, there's a difference there. Uh, between uh, the, the money as as it was when they pass it and passed the law and as it is so that's something to keep in mind so it may not affect them that much as I said before also if you're a business owner there's also cuts that's coming for you if you plan on starting a business you know that's something to keep in mind all right but um, if you're a business owner there's cuts that's coming for you that could be in the high teens or even uh, the early 20s in percentage that could be very beneficial for you so this won't bother you too much this is just in the sense of uh, income tax so that's something to look into now as you guys look at the chart you can see how things have changed from 2018 to 20 uh from 2017 excuse me to 2018 regarding income tax and also how you file if you're filing a single or married all right we're looking at those who are in the 10 percent from zero to a single from zero to nine thousand five hundred twenty five dollars it pretty much stays the same which is why the complaints where i talked about in the beginning with those who don't make much poverty line or below uh some people are saying they're not really getting much of a cut the cut is there but it is below one percent which is why you're not seeing the much of a difference in in the 10 percent there which is not uh, you know much of a change of course we could go to the you know nine point in decimals in percentage but we're not doing all that now 15 percent to 12 percent that's the second bracket up there 25 to 22 28 to 24 23 to 32 the next one we just talked about in detail uh and the final one for the guys who are making the big bucks 39.6 to 37 all right so um that's how it's looking now here's another um slide circling the number four that we talked about in detail um but anyway we're gonna move on to how long does it last now this lasts to about 2025 the year 2025 it starts this year in 2018 you'll probably feel the effects um as early as february when you're looking at your checks um there might be some more money in there for you okay now everything's a give and take all right we want to make sure that we're falling in the give um area you know, uh, I'm sorry, the, the take area where we're taking was beneficial for us and we're giving away uh, the least possible. Not that we don't want to help our countries, our country, excuse me, but um, we do have to take care of our families the best way we can without breaking the law. So, of course, there's an exception for corporate cuts. For those with corporations, this cut goes further on than 2025. They will revert back to some of them will revert back to what they were in um 2017 and of course there will be a hike to some or many of them by 2026 when this expires in 2025 now um so i said before if you have a corporation this works for you what i would suggest before we all panic about the hike that's coming and so forth is that we take advantage of what we can the loopholes right now okay um especially to the black men that i speak to in our community we deal with a lot of people that complain because we are uninformed and we are stepped on we're left behind so um 
specifically to you guys learn the ropes and take advantage the best way you can i'm no expert you know i do have a few degrees in in fields that relate to the u.s economy i'm no economist but um i'm very well um tuned with also global economy you know so um I can shed light on this just a little bit. The research is really up to you guys to do. Don't get confused by the numbers. If you have questions, ask me. There's other brothers on YouTube who probably have degrees in this field who breaks it down a lot better than I do or in more detail. So I'm trying to keep this as basic as possible without confusing anybody. All right. So um, that's how long it will last. Also, during that time, we'll be looking at inflation, which I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, but if I did, sorry for the redundancy. But um. We're, we're talking about some inflation throughout the year, so certain things may become a bit more pricey, okay? But um, you'll be having some money, some more money in your pocket. So once again, give and take, you know, cause and effect, yin and yang. I don't want to make this, uh, you know, too much of a juxtaposition, but it is it is um, something to pay attention to. So um, inflation is something to keep in mind. But um, what can we do to alter this? Absolutely nothing. All right. There's not much we're doing to change this. I don't see any any uh, national protests on a large scale taking place to where we might have, uh, you know, force the hand of, of 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 those in Washington to do anything. Not that I think anybody cares to do anything. We haven't really been doing much to change anything in the last decades or so. Um, so, you know, I want people to get into the mindset that there's not much you can do about the hurricane that's coming or there's not much you can do about the blossoming season that's coming, whichever way you look at it as optimistic or pessimistic. All right. Positive or negative. There's not much we can do about that season. The season is coming regardless. Let's just be smart about it and use it to our advantage. OK, so let's move on to uh, number seven. How can we benefit from it in the two ways? All right. It's very simple. The, the, the first way you can benefit from this is um, just enjoy the cuts. You know, um, hopefully everyone here is making more than zero dollars a year and more than nine thousand dollars a year. So I'm going to say, um, you know, take advantage of the cuts. That's the best thing you can do. And um, we're going to get to more details of where you can take advantage in. Now, I heard a, a lot last year about black people talking about black businesses. For those in our minority community, we're talking about black owned businesses. If you plan on starting a business, this might be the best time for you, especially if you are living in a conservative slash Republican state. This is very beneficial for you because they usually have lower taxes. Um, if you're living in a blue state, a.k.a. a Democrat state. Now, I want to first apologize for the background sound. It might have changed. I had to move my location. There were some noises around. Um, I was saying if you're living in a Democrat state or a liberal state, blue state, chances are you might be having uh, it. Might, it may not be as lucrative as a beginning business owner because the taxes tend to be higher. So even with the cuts, you will still be cutting from a higher um, tree, so to speak, for lack of a better uh, analogy. Um, now, I am not one to care much for partisanship, so I want to make that clear. Um, I'm being as objective as possible, and I'm trying to give you guys the most accurate information. I won't care much for Democrats over Republicans or Republicans over Democrats. I'm going to tell you what I think is best for you, myself, my family, friends, and, um, you know, people in general who wish to maneuver these political economic waters for the betterment of their family and those that they love. So as we move on, on this slide, we're going to talk about how it eliminates personal exemption. Before the act, taxpayers subtracted 4100 from income for each person claim. As a result, some families with many children will pay higher taxes despite the act's increased standard deduction. So that's something to keep in mind. I would call it a con in my opinion, but everybody may see things differently based on where they stand financially. Next step. The act eliminates most itemized deduction. I don't like this one either, but you'll see why. That includes moving expenses. You know how you used to write that off? Yeah. Except for members of the military. 
those paying alimony can no longer deduct it from a red pill man you guys already know how i feel about this i hate this completely and um it's ironic because president trump is a man who's been through a few divorces himself so yeah but i know he's not the one coming up with this you know we do have uh you know the the, the two houses to the, in the senate the houses in the, in the senate to deal with so okay let's read that again those paying alimony can no longer deduct it while those receiving it can that just does not sit right with me let's read that again and let it sink in those paying alimony can no longer deduct it from their tax filings while those receiving it can stay red pill anyway this change began in 2019 for divorces signed in 2018 prepay any deductions you normally take in 2018 examples include unreimbursed businesses expenses for employees home equity loans interest and your tax preparer now next up it limits the deduction on mortgage interests this won't affect most of you guys because unless you're buying a home at about a million dollars this pretty much is good for you still it just ruined it for those who had that all the way up to a million bucks who can buy a home that's worth a million dollars okay it limits the deduction on mortgage interest to the first seven hundred uh seven hundred fifty seven hundred fifty thousand dollars excuse me and some reports it is saying five hundred thousand so i guess we still have to verify that some more of the loans interest on home equity lines of credit can no longer be deducted current mortgage holders aren't affected the deduction allows homeowners to write off the interest they pay on home loans in turn effectively reduce the amount of their taxable income all right let's read that red part because it explains it the best let's read that again the deduction allows homeowners to write off the interest they pay on home loans in turn effectively reduce or reducing the amount of their taxable income so that's actually a good thing um i don't think there's much change there uh unless we can look at the exact amount of you know reductions that we're talking about but if you pass 750k or at least 500k based on some reports this no longer applies to you now taxpayers can deduct up to ten thousand dollars in state local taxes they must choose between property taxes and income taxes or sales tax okay that's something to let sink in i'm going to talk about that in detail oh. <clears throat> excuse me now certain states of course you know you're dealing with state tax local taxes sales tax property tax depending on your state this can be very lucrative once again if you are in a red state republican state such as texas um florida for example um they don't have a state income tax so this would of course not apply in that sense but if you're talking about local taxes if you're opening a business and you're talking about sales taxes or maybe you're even i'm sure paying sales taxes when you're purchasing an item um you can deduct up to ten thousand dollars of expenses now if you are in a state where you know it's way above that you may not feel it so much depending on your expenses but however if if it is under that or close to it this can be very very good for you that's actually a pro in my opinion also next step the act repeals the obamacare which i already talked about um i think that was enough details on that we don't need to go over that one again and um the next one after that is it allows businesses to deduct the cost of depreciable assets in one year instead of amortizing them over several years now that word amortizing is basically saying gradually um for those of you who may not know off the top of your head is to grad instead of gradually adding up you know items that are falling apart and are depreciating in value that are part of your business you know you can do that in one year now you can deduct that you know in one year that's also good you know when you're doing your 
your reporting to the authorities. Now, this does not, imp uh, I believe this does not include certain um, damages, maybe to the actual property itself. Let's say you have a restaurant. If the wall falls down, I don't believe that's part of a de depreciating um, item. If you have, let's say, uh, an oven, I believe that falls under that category. So for those of you thinking about black businesses doing your own thing, which I would highly suggest, this is something to look into. I'm going to try to wrap this up. I don't want to hold it too long, but I wanted you brothers to be informed, hopefully a little bit, a little bit more than CNN and Fox News and your local uh, news stations are telling you with all the bias that you might be getting what you're looking at with this plan now it is about 500 plus pages if i'm not mistaken um that that you know the bill and the act so um you know it's kind of hard to go through i haven't been able to go through all of them um it is kind of part of my job i don't want to say exactly what i do but um you know it's it's um it's hefty but it is important to to understand. So I hope I summarized it the best I could for you guys. All right. Sorry for the um, the ums and the mumbles, but I have to think about what I'm doing to try to give accurate information the best way that I can. All right. Next step. It raises the standard deduction to 20 percent for pass through businesses. That's 20 percent. That's the 20 you saw in that um, previous slide that I came uh, that I had um, I think about two slides ago um, regarding small businesses. If you're going to be a small business owner, once again, this can be very good for you. This is not the corporations. I believe the corporations are looking at a 35% for them. Um, most of us are not big corporations. We don't have Fortune 500 companies, but some of us are aspiring to become business owners. We have to um, be aware of this and take advantage of it. Instead of complaining where this plan fails, we have to take advantage of where this plan is beneficial. All right. Um, th this deduction ends after 2025, as I told you guys, unless it is extended. Pass through businesses include sole proprietorship. OK, this is sole owners, no employees, partnerships, limited liability companies, LLCs. That's what it stands for. And, and the acronym, most of you guys heard of an LLC. Um, and S corporations. They also include real estate companies, hedge funds, and private equity funds. The deductions phase out for service professionals once their income reaches 157,500. Of course, that's probably not most people. And 315,000 for joint fillers. Once again, you're probably not married. And if you are, that's probably still not most people. So, that's something to look at now where where this sounds good and it fails is where we're talking about certain people who are calling themselves a small company such as a tax agent a plumber an it technician those people are really not cracking this kind of money they kind of fall in the crack and it's probably you know kind of beneficial but i'll give you guys the give and take soon hold one second uh let me see all right. Sorry about that. I had to read an information real quick. Um, now, where the give and take is here is, um, for example, if a person is working for a news station as a, let's say, a correspondent or anchor, um, this person can better yet. Let me give you a better example. Let's say you are a pizza delivery driver and you deliver pizzas for a living. You're working for the company. You know, of course, you're not a company. This 20 percent does not apply to you. And of course, I'm sure you're not making one hundred fifty seven thousand dollars a year. So you would still be qualified. But the um, the problem is, is that you're not a, you're not a corporation. You're not I'm not a corporation. Excuse me. You're not you're not an LLC. You're not a hedge fund. You're not a sole proprietary ship. You're not any of those listed here. So this would not apply to you. Now, what you can do, like the IT tech, you could probably go ahead and open up your limited liability company where you make yourself an actual company that has contracts with pizza shops that delivers for them. This would make you fall into that category of a small business instead of providing the food. And here's an idea for some of you guys who, who want to probably um, go against Uber Eats. Um, you become a company that actually delivers food for the company. You don't Let's say you don't require tips, you know, you just have a deal where the pizza company or food company pays you and you deliver for them. Now, you quit, you quit your job delivering pizza to open a company delivering pizza. You fall and you'll get this 20% dedu dedu deduction. That's good. Now, 
the part where you give is you're not going to get the benefits that come with your company and you're going to have to do all of those things yourself. Okay. Nothing's wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, if it's lucrative enough, you can go ahead and do that. I just wanted to point that out. Also, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, IT techs, you know, this is not as beneficial as it could be, but you know, 20% still help. Um, but they're not job creators. That's what I really, really trying to say, because they're using this area to say that they're going to be able to create more jobs by giving a break to the small businesses. Now, myself, I'm a small business owner, so that's actually kind of good, but it doesn't necessarily translate at 100 percent or even at a high 90 percent or even 80 for that matter that jobs will be created using this system okay theoretically it sounds good if i'm getting a 20 percent deduction i'm probably be able to spend 20 percent more you know i probably be able to give more overtime i'm probably able to give out more bonuses i'm probably able to hire more employees within that 20 percent that's being retained in my pocket okay or i can just decide to get more products and sell you know rather than do anything for my employees i might just help my own pocket and probably just overwork them you know it depends on who's in charge and what they decide to do so i i, I like the theory but in practice it may or may not happen i would probably put it at a 50 50 all right and you have to hope that the majority of small business owners are at the 50 percent that's actually creating jobs out there for other people okay now as i wrap this up i hope i shed some light on this in my low bar and in my first comment that i will pin i will drop a glossary with the definition of tax terminologies i want a lot of you brothers to understand tax terminology you follow me a lot of you guys don't get involved in business because you say you're not educated you didn't study business look half the times you don't need all of that stuff you need to understand tax terminology to understand what they mean like my number one I have a few terminologies on there on that slide with the touching points all right if you don't understand them the glossary of the irs all right will be down there in my comment section and in my low bar the description area teaching you guys in detail you know uh what the definition mean what they stand for i myself i'm still a student you know in the area but i have done more work than those in my community than most of those in my community to say the to say the least you know of course not all of them they are very highly intellectual tax finance and um economy savvy individuals in the african-american black haitian jamaican community however that is not most of us and we don't really have a media outlet that speaks about these stuffs and, and these things in detail so um i hope i shed light hope you guys know um what's going on now and take advantage of it the best way you can for those aspiring business owners go for it man i wish you guys the best god bless take it easy and as always this is your brother mr limba Stay locked into the MLC, man. Stands for the Mr. Limba channel. You already know. You already know. And uh, don't get divorced in 2018. That alimony deal just sucks. Anyway, Mr. Limba out.